What is up you guys, the boars, welcome to this very very fine episode of Battle Style. This time we're gonna talk about the Gorium playstyle, this is gonna be episode number 6 out of 8. And hopefully I'll do finish this before January. Yeah, so without further ado, we're gonna talk about the Guardian playstyle. And I think a lot of you guys know exactly what a Guardian playstyle is, but it has been kinda hard to define. So what a Guardian playstyle really is all about is actually to try to maintain a synergy in the team and the synergy in this team is basically try to keep every poke as at best of your ability of course to not fall in battle and it it is very dependent on your team setup but often you have three pokes that are in one way or another they're built on each other to cover each other's tracks often they have um, coverage for each other's weaknesses and then you have what we call filler pokes and those other three filler pokes are either a starter sweeper or a tank but they are often in synergy with the three pokes that are the premise a good definition of a guardian team is um, i think the modern twist on it uh, once or is out here is of course think about camrot has a lot huge weakness against uh, water and uh, to that you try to take a Pokemon that coverage and the best coverage is Mantine who coverage both the water of course with the water absorb but also can take care of the earthquakes which camera to uh, the, the, the camera suffered from and then we have all right cam one thing that Mantine can't deal with is electric so right then Molga can come in having the motor drive and deal with that and uh, the huge weakness that all share are rocks so it's very likely that to maintain momentum in that team you try to bring a steel type that can actually deal with the maintaining weaknesses and often are the last filler and the filler are based around the weaknesses that they don't cover so the cover charges ground which is very very impressive and uh, are very frustrating to deal with because this premise is often making people that you can't really dent the team you have to work around it which means that this team easily get momentum and had a lot of things going for it for a whole time another thing that is kind of hard to deal with is that these type of players since the synergy is so vast and so good they have no issues for baiting and baiting is basically when you you know bring a poke to try to make the player force a switch and since the synergy is so good they don't really fall for that because they feel really safe just all around so never try to trick these players to force switch because they will stay in, they will see that you're that you're bluffing and they will beat your sorry ass for it. <laughs> I can't stress that enough. I actually fall for that a lot of times before and uh, I will probably do it once. <laughs> I will probably do it again. Hell, I never see this guy coming. Uh, you can often see the synergy of the team by the team matchup as I mentioned before. And really take a look at the biggest weaknesses of the team. Uh, Gorion players often have very few weaknesses, but they rather have one huge weakness that four, you know, four times effective than having a lot of two times effective. Because four times effective means that they can narrow down to one safe switching. So that is something to keep in mind, and it's something you're going to see right off the bat. A good team build-up or a team matchup will often tell you that, all right, this team is weak to ice, so it has this to cover it. And you have to think about that before going in. Plus, these guys often doesn't have any real starter. They are just matchuppers. So what that means is that they can predict you really well if you have a solid starter or fake you out very, very easily and bait you. Because these guys are good at baiting because they will, like I said, stay in against a lot of things and do that really, really well. There's variability of a Guardian player is extremely high, much like the Staller blocker playstyle. A Guardian player is very, very conservative against its Pokémon. It doesn't really scout as much because it do rely on the opponent doing the mistakes and they just um, pretty much make them play offensive so they can do the correct plays and counter you. It is very, very frustrating. It's very, very hard to really bring down a team like that. And um, these. Uh, these Pokemon that they are using are often based on uh, instead of you know clear sweepers, they rather have 
a type of lockdowns and uh, using ship damage to force you out and do little by little damage against every switch in. They usually use hazards to maintain the momentum because since you have a team that can survive for a long time, you might as well have hazards to deal with that and since the players are switching out a lot to make to get the right matchup, they will most likely take um, uh, residual damage from, um, of course, the hazards. So a good way to think of this is, of course, to have a spinner or defogger to try to m maintain your HP as well as possible. And you really have to be extremely offensive to deal with these guys pretty early on because they will win late game every, every, every single time without a doubt in my mind they will. So, we, of course, with all this in mind, you know, this player style is very intuitive, it's very, very advanced, and I'll say it's one of the most complex play styles you can even go about if you want to uh, go into the competitive scene, really, and it's very, very good in the metagames, and definitely it's good in the higher tiers, you know, UU, OU, this is where this type of play style really comes down, because having a high survivability is very good and is great to maintaining Pokemon alive, of course, in a, in a field where it's very, very easily to go down. But, you know, this structure has a few issues and we're gonna go straight down to it. The first big issue, and uh, I think this is the issue that many people are having trouble with, that is the hyper-offensive player. This is a player that maintain pressure, never leave any opportunity for momentum, and, you know, just keep going at it. Pokemon with uh, a broad uh, move pool has a very good way of um, dealing with these type of players because they can predict them right and they can deal with the safe switch-ins and just overall maintaining a pressure that these type of players just can't really deal with and of course if you break down this team and you know the team's synergy starts to fall these four times effective damage will actually take a toll and will actually start hitting those Pokemon which they shouldn't you know very very often you see a team with a guard chomp and they have the coverage around it so it doesn't get hit by it but eventually if you're gonna lose then yes you're gonna find yourself a situation where a guard chomp will go down to an ice beam and it's very very likely that will happen if you don't maintain the synergy of the team which is an issue for this kind of guys and um, like I said hyper offensive players has a huge advantage against these guys because of the, their just overall they're maintaining their <laughs> the pressure Another thing is that Guardian players often overthink stuff, which means that they can actually, since uh, other players are very fast at uh, making their decisions, uh, overthinking means that you take too long um, in a battle, which means that eventually your opponent will find out that they are thinking a lot, which means that if they start playing unpredictable, the opponent that is, that these players really, really, really feel discomforted and very tough. The feeling that every choice they make is tougher and they can't predict right. And uh, that's a huge issue. And uh, these players really, really suffer a lot of this. And uh, the reason I actually take the time to mention this is because you can actually find out if you're going against a player like this just by that definition. If you know that every time that you are faster at deciding, do this one time and actually wait it out just once, just wait down the clock for them and then take an action, it will blow their mind, they will be so stressed and uh, their pulls will be way up, which often means that next turn they will actually, they will overthink stuff because you did, um, you did the safe play but you took 90 seconds to do it, that will just be so tough for them to deal with uh, mentally that they will start playing very very predictable to be able to maintain a facade and uh, being more aggressive which these guys never really can do um, because their team is not built for being offensive it's built to um, recover up and um, basically not lose damage and this is a great way to enter their team and break their core uh, but that is like the only like real issues for these guys. Like I said, the synergy, if they can maintain it in a battle, then you will definitely lose. But if you can break it down to the very fundamentals, then yes, you have an honest chance. But never go late game against this guy. You need to beat him way early. Hell, their fo first poke needs to go down before turn 10. I'm, I promise you this. If you can't do that, then you're in trouble. 
So, with that in mind, guys, let's actually go to review of today. And today's review is, of course, about Anima. Anima is probably the key Guardian player I do know about. And, I mean, I had Callum who loves Crafty here before. But, you know, after knowing Anima or Laura Davis, then yeah, she is way, way better at this playstyle. And, you know, she's probably the person that I will, you know, point my finger at that, that that's that's how you do it. That's how you do it perfectly. And, uh, yeah, she's very tough. Uh, no doubts about it. I've beaten her once before and I did it because I know what I wanted to create. Um, and after that, I tried to... Um, build a team that is well for her and uh, often lose you know because even though I tried to beat her at her own game she does this way way better than me and uh, yeah, yeah I have basically no chance it is a very very cool experience and I definitely recommend you guys checking her out and you know I'm gonna go into the you know the small bits you know the things that matters the things that you guys care about and definitely my I care about this of course and um, first of all how much of Guardian playstyle is Anima? And of course, I'm gonna give her an S on that. You know, like I said, there is no other like battler I do know that knew know about that I can actually you know point that that that's the Guardian playstyle. The thing is that I confused Anima before uh, for much like Xenon, you know, a duelist player, but I realized that she got a lot of duelists in her. Uh, so definitely giving her an A there. And Duelist is basically, you know, bringing originality, bringing things that creates momentum. That that is the whole Duelist. Uh, thought process to actually have original sets that can wall out things that they shouldn't wall out and by that getting a lot of momentum and a lot of high ship damage and I'm also gonna put her on a high list on a blocker playstyle much like Pimp Knight actually she has a very good way of maintaining a blockage um, a way of tanking out a lot of damage and it's going to do with her biggest weaknesses which means uh, if you watch my earliest episode, that I tried to uh, um, define which playstyle beats which, and uh, she has definitely developed that she can she can deal with hyper offensive team, and that means lockdowns. That means a lot of blockage and uh, a lot of retaliation after that. And I think she does this perfectly. She is very very impressive while doing this, and she's very tough to beat down because. She relies on momentum to her side, and she often baits her opponent to uh, to lure them to think that she doesn't know what she's doing, which means that she gains a lot of momentum when she decides to finish the game, or when she, 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 she sees an honest chance to actually break through. Uh, because she's not a good early game player, she doesn't rely on that. She relies on being late game, she relies on getting the momentum mid game, and never really let it go, which means that she can keep pressure up for a very, very long time, and it's actually very, very impressive. And we're gonna go through the attack stats and overall basis of her strategies. So, at her individual stats, looking at her right off the bat, she's definitely gonna give from the attack set an A, and it's very easy for me to give her that because I think she started off in trying to be offensive and uh, she maintained a lot of that thought process which means that she is definitely a threat to be dealing with she knows how to utilize sweepers she know how to make tanks offensive enough to deal with a lot of counters which means that she got a lot of pressure going for even if she doesn't try to develop it which also means that she is not really that weak to um, aggression she can actually deal with that she can retaliate she can cope with that for a long time pressure Defensively, definitely an S, and that is for the right reasons too. She, since she is a Guardian playstyle, she's got a lot of good synergy in her team, which means that she's a lot of thought process before doing the team, and when she have done it, she tried to realize which counters are this team vulnerable to, and try to develop a team that could deal with that in the long run. Often you see her team being that, the one weakness that she got, she's very aware of it, and they actually try to use that to her advantage and uh, often have Pokemon that can actually bring down the Pokemon that are supposed to counter it because she often got a vast removal pool so a lot of pokes to actually bring the originality to it and then we come to her element of surprise which is easy A for the same very same reason her element of surprise is never really uh, aggression player player by any means 
but it's more about a counter to deal with the Pokémon that should actually defeat his team. Which in counter, which also means that she often wins battle because she actually got the threats out of the way very early and she actually is very good at baiting that to happen and that's come with her originality really that she actually knows how to bait them out and um, having original sets which means it's gonna stay in against a matchup that are going to lose but they aren't aware of it which means that she got the momentum right off the bat and easily get it very very early on if the opponent are unaware of it and uh, then we go to sack play which actually is her least um, favorable <laughs> I guess status she is not working as well if she's being predicted and uh, that is something that you know she's working around it and but I guess that comes from being and starting off hyper offensive that you can't really find your way back to um, a safer play if she has the momentum then the aggression will work it off but if you don't if the opponent tried to be stally and actually retaliate by being somewhat original and do the same thing that she does then she is in trouble she will lose poke very fast and uh, that often means that you can actually bring and go down to the core against her but you know it takes a practice to actually do that and uh, she's getting better by doing it which means that it's not a safe way to try to bring her down it, it, it is not as simple she's still a C so she still is in my regards you know the average player when it comes to sack plays but she got a lot of other things going for her that she never really need to develop that style if the opponent doesn't you know bring it down to her and actually force that to happen she's very tough to deal with and there's a very very t you need to actually be aware of that I'm gonna give her a total of an A uh, had she been better with the sack play then yes she's definitely one of those players that I would regard for an S she's almost there and the day she does is they were all screwed and cannot keep Quacktubing because she'll win every time. I am one of them that are actually in trouble against this person because she is so good in so many other areas which means that I can never bring her down to the position I wanted her to because she sees right through me or she can deal with that in the long run. So with that in mind we're gonna talk about the pros and cons with Anima or off Anima. <clears throat> So if we really get down to it, what is it that does Anima so great and so tough to deal with? Well the first thing and the one that I really think is worth mentioning is the very thought that she has a high value for her opponent. She's never undermining it. Uh, she often treats her opponent like at least as good as she are, which means that she can see a lot of things happening. She is never really... Um, she is not having a hard time against uh, people that play original. She actually appreciates that she can actually work around it because if she, she's, if she sees that happen, then she can actually cope with that rather well. And uh, I think that's a huge strength for a battler to have that, you know, just because a weird place is happening, she can kind of define her opponent after that. But she has a high tolerance and a high definement. And she never bad mouthing. She's definitely. Um, respecting her opponent as a player and it's very very cool it's very very good to have that mindset because that means that you get a lot of strength coming from your own because then you know that your opponent do are um, behaving a certain way and which also means you can build momentum from that and the second thing I'm gonna mention is of course that she rarely falls for baiting uh, she is very good at not fall for um, the obvious place but she can actually um, how to put it she can be behave in that way to uh, actually leave you know for debate for against opponent and actually pretend to fall for debate and uh, actually wait for a better time for her to um, work around it which often means that the opponent think that they have a false momentum only to fall really really short because um, Anima actually saw what he was up to which often means that she gets a momentum and probably often very often actually finish the game because of that which is really cool and it's very very tough to actually do that and fake your own um, oblivious um, because that is basically what she does she behaves like she's oblivious to the battle only to actually show in mid-game that she knows what he's all about or she is all about and retaliate 
and often win because of that, because that momentum is so game-breaking for a lot of teams, and that is one of her biggest strengths, that she doesn't, because of her team build-up, she doesn't really need to take a lot of damage. She can often sack a poke just for the behavior and the overall team structure to um, fake that she's losing only to retaliate and know exactly which play she has to make to uh, come back, which is very cool to see. She does it so often and uh, basically if you take a downer poke against her, uh, it means nothing. If you take it down a bit too easy, then you're screwed. Then you need to try to find out how she is going to win against you. Like I said, it's very often she knows exactly what she that, that play is all about and it's up to you to find out how to work around it. So, the other thing I'm gonna mention is that she is very good at maintaining momentum and that comes often out of that play. And maintaining momentum is basically, there are safe switching, there are safe force switch-ins and she's very good at um, knowing when her Pokemon are switching out and switch with them to do a double switch only to keep even more pressure out of the battle. Uh, she had a Pokemon named Pjork, or Pjork, um, a Embor, which is it's so cool and she got a lot of very very good wins out of that Pokemon because she predicted the, the switch out and got momentum and since those Pokemon that she use for momentum and for high damage they often come in on safe switches and uh, her safe switches are never sack plays but are predicted switches which means that it often comes in a very very tough poke that can just annihilate whatever is on the field and she does this very very good and you should be aware of this and beware to not fall for it because that is just awful that will happen to you so you know, with all this thing, you know, there are things that she doesn't do as well um, that are, you know, a way to play around her to actually get into the core and actually try to beat her. i never done this myself, but I've seen players does this and um, basically they do one thing very, very good and it's only really one or two things that kind of... it. it isn't really a weaknesses as much as Anima have a hard time coping with it, but that means nothing in the way of Pokemon because she's still a strong enough player to cope with it. But these are the things that she needs to work on and are also the plays that you need to do if you want to beat her. So alright, let's actually get right to it. The first thing, and this is actually the thing that is a weakness for the Guardian plays overall, but that are the hyper offensive players. The players that you know have a high momentum and a high pressure in a team can actually whittle down Anima in the long run. Anima has a way of coping with this with the blockage that she is bringing to the team. But if you are a good of high offensive players, then you will eventually break down the core. And with a good maintaining in uh, the move pool, then you, yes, you should definitely be able to cope with it. Though it hardly, it hardly is the only thing that you know work. And like I said. Anima has a way of working with this, so if you aren't comfortable in that playstyle, then you will just fall extremely short. And um, like I said, you really need to know what she is all about to actually be able to play hyper offensive against it. Because, like I said, a hyper offensive team is made to build pressure, not to play defensively. So, if you force to play defensively, then she got you. It is that simple. You should never be able to really switch out. If you have to switch out, then you have to sack play. That is the only way to keep momentum in a hyper offensive team so that is worth keeping in mind and if you're able to cope with that then you're in loss it is that simple uh, also early game hacks affect her uh, she has a very good way of uh, you know in late game hacks it doesn't really affect her as much but early game hacks can build um, her uh, morale down a bit which is it doesn't it isn't a weakness per se because it it is built out of um, the chance play of the game, but she can definitely get extremely frustrated about it. So it's worth keeping in mind that if you want to, uh, or rather, if um, if uh, she gets hacked really early on, then she is very likely very predictable to only maintain a momentum for her own sake to actually keep her head clear because she is annoyed by the very of the definition of her being hacked. Which you know we all are that, but I think that she maintaining that morale for uh, a lot longer than a usual person do and um, especially if you lose a poke by it then yes 
she will be rather frustrated and do frustrated plays throughout the battle. Another thing is force her to play offensively. It is often... she's very good at playing offensive, like she's started off hyper offensive and it really comes to show, but uh, her team synergy is really built around uh, the hyper offensive. The only thing she got that the hyper offensive is the obvious sweeper and the originality sweeper that she always brings. But if they are out of the way because she plays offensively, then she is going to have a high or, or a long battle against her. She doesn't necessarily need to lose by it. Uh, I think when she loses her sweeper, that she is still very good at uh, maintaining a pressure on the team against her uh, or the team that is against her. But losing her hyper offensive pokes means that she has nothing to build on, which means that you can play offensively against her. Uh, and that is often the way people try to break her team, if they do it. But like I said, she has a lot of strategies to work around this, and even if I tell her that this is her biggest issue, it means nothing, because she is very very strong overall player. She got issues with these things, it, but it hardly makes her weak. It just means that she, her team synergy often means that she needs to build other types of mentor for her team to actually cooperate with that. And like I said guys, I have a hot, very tough time against a player like this and I believe most people do because keeping momentum in a team and have a good synergy is not an easy thing to do and I think it takes a very very advanced player to actually do this successfully and Anima is one of those persons so make sure to check her out. And that is all for my review actually, so I hope you guys enjoyed this. And uh, basically, check out Anima. She is great, she is tough, she is your worst nightmare, and I have nightmares every day against her, about her, with her. The definition of English never works my way, but really, guys, make sure to check her out if you haven't before. And if you follow me, then you definitely already have. She is, like I said, one of the best players I do know, and this playstyle is very, very tough to do. So, the weaknesses that come with this playstyle means that you have to be a very very complex player to actually break through and uh, I'm telling you guys right here and now being hyper offensive is not an easy task and uh, even if you are then you have a tough time against you, you really really do so I want to thank you guys as always for watching and uh, don't forget of course to leave a like it's got a lengthy video yet again and if you're new to my channel don't forget to subscribe and check out the other battle styles video that's gonna be on the playlist down below and of course guys after watching this remember the sky is the limit so have a good day and take care all right bye